Hey there! I found another cool calculator at Goodwill, Verona Road. This is a Casio Color Power Graphics CFX 9850G. So this is from 1996. And this is actually the first calculator I've gotten from Goodwill that doesn't automatically just power up. There was some corrosion on the battery terminals. Not like a critical amount. Shouldn't have been enough to stop it from working. So in this video I'm going to take it apart, try to figure out what's wrong, and then we can try it out. I like how it's kind of like overly industrially designed. Like you have like these faux hex cap head screws. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Eh, let's see, how does this come apart? Well that battery is dead. What is it, a 2032? Of course. All right, let's see. Yeah, you can see, that's the thing. I think, you know, well, I guess it's probably not the Goodwills who leave the batteries in there for years. It's the, you know, the people that donate this stuff. Um, are there any hidden screws? What is this? What is this square up at the top? Does that come off or is that just a grip of some kind? You got me running, got me changing my mind. You got me <laughs> A friend of mine got me hooked on watching those uh, Vince Neil Can't Sing videos on YouTube. <laughs> the lead singer from Motley Crue. So yeah, <laughs> we watched those videos and me and my friends watched the documentary about them called The Dirt on Netflix. We're in like Flynn. It looks like they have a connector there. Wait a minute. That's kind of weird. That's how the power attaches? Oh, oh crap. Well, we broke something. That's not good. Oops. Hopefully it still goes back together. Is that, is that a, some kind of switch? Oh, oh no, it is. See that? That's why it wasn't running. It's because this switch needed to be on. Is that, that must be connected to the battery terminal somehow? Ah, uh, well, <laughs> let me go back. Let me go back in time. Do, 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 do. Yeah, it still goes together well enough. <clears throat> I'm sure all the Casio users are like, oh, Ben, you noob. Seriously, is that it? Nope, it's still not doing anything. All I wanted to do was play my guitar and sing. Take me away, I don't mind. Long as you promise me I'll be back in time. Do, 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 do. I think they should remake Back to the Future. No, I'm serious. The kind of movies that should be remade are the ones whose themes become more relevant with the passing of time. Imagine a teenager now trying to operate in the 1980s. I mean, they should have done it like in 2015, but oh well. I mean, think about it. Like everything they do is on a phone. They would, be, they would be much more a fish out of water than Marty was in 1955. Because think about it. Like, let's say, if you compare 1955 to 1985. Hey, how, you want to hang out with your friends. What do you do? Well, you use the telephone. You use the landline. You call their house. Maybe their parent or their sibling answers. Hey, I want to talk to my friend. Hey, is friend here? Yeah. Phone call. And then you talk to him. Like that didn't change between 1955 and 1985. But now if a teen had to operate in 1985, they wouldn't know what to do. It looks like everything is right here. There's a, it looks like a Ram chip, glop top, ASIC. So that's a lot different than the other calculators we've seen in this era. They basically, you, an ASIC is where, well, not a, a glop top ASIC is basically where they bond the silicon of the chip directly to the PCB, then cover it with um, epoxy to protect it. It's commonly called a glop top. And it's just a much cheaper way of doing things. This doesn't explain why it doesn't turn on. And this is like, I think, I think it's like the screen is like four colors, like blue, red, green, and black. 
I'm not exactly sure how that works. Um, how was this attached? Uh, I don't really, is there anything underneath it? Yes, there are more driver chips. So it looks like pretty much everything is on this side. Uh, well, I probably, uh, it's kind of tough because I got this ribbon cable and I don't, I mean, I could desolder it, but I don't really want to. Ugh, there's one more, one more of my fail tabs. I failed. Is this? Oh, that's oh, that's not a ribbon cape connector. That's just a piece of tape. I was scared by a piece of tape. Hey, what did they charge for this? Eight dollars? Oh no, there is a ribbon cable there. Oh great. I think they kind of overpriced this <laughs> at Goodwill. Uh, like you can get this on eBay for like. Fifteen dollars. Goodwill wanted eight, which is the same thing Goodwill charged me for a, a TI eighty four plus, which you still have to pay eighty dollars for at the store. So looks like there's two extra RAM chips. Oh, it's probably a ROM and then two RAMs because this thing you know proudly proclaims thirty two K RAM, which wasn't impressive in nineteen ninety six. Believe me, I know, I was there. Peeling this tape back reveals something. See that right there? That's actually the LCD controller. That's usually what's being hidden inside of the ribbon cable going to an LCD controller. So, you know, you've probably seen this if you've worked with like those Adafruit screens and stuff, but you know, you're, you're sending commands and whatnot to the LCD. So there's a controller that interprets the commands and also does like the matrix scene driving the um, columns and rows of the LCD and you never have to worry about that. It's a little bit more elegant and advanced than what was in the TI calculators. I'm still not sure if I can actually get this to separate because there's like, see they have uh, they have columns and row driver here and I don't want to, well, I don't want to ruin the calculator that won't turn on. <laughs> oh maybe that switches the power from the triple A's to the battery. It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to switch the batteries now, but you leave that in place. I don't know. And then now, now it fell out. So unlike the other calculators we looked at on this channel, this one, the distance between the screen and the ribbon cables and the LCD is pretty tight. I'm just trying to see what else is in there. There's two more chips under there. They all look like RAM under here. Well, we can look, but I guarantee there's going to be nothing but keys, but we can look anyway. No, Ben, you've destroyed the calculator that defined my childhood. That calculator saved my life in Nam. It was my best man at my wedding. I said, if I don't make it back, take care of my girl for me. Yeah. If you're in a war movie, whatever you do, don't start talking about your girl back home. I want to get this screen up. If it dies, it dies. I mean, $8, let's be honest. I spent more than that on beef jerky this week. So I finally got to see the mythical Bucky's gas station chain in Texas. I've been to Texas many times, but I've never been to a Bucky's. But now I have. How to describe Bucky's? Well, here in Wisconsin, we have quick chip gas stations, which we are very fond of because they have groceries and really above average gas station food. But Bucky's makes Quick Chip look like a can of gas sitting out in the cornfield. Um, they're huge. I mean, it's kind of like, uh, maybe the best way to describe it is like, it's like a, like almost like an REI combined with a gas station, combined with a restaurant, or not a restaurant, a grocery store. So we go in there, and my buddy's like, you want some beef jerky for the trip, mate? And they've got this beef jerky deli, right? So it's like where you go to the deli and they've got all the meats or the whatever, or the vegetables or the salads lined up, but it's beef jerky. And they probably have, I think they advertise 20 feet of beef jerky. <laughs> so we got half a pound of it. I think it was $25 a pound, which actually isn't a bad price. Okay, I think I can open this up enough to see what the chips are underneath. So there's two Toshiba chips in there. 
they look to be identical. It's probably going to be the Ram. So I'm guessing, I'll look it up, but I'm guessing it's Ram, Ram, ROM, CPU. I hate with these old components, you end up with all these like weird data sheet part suppliers and they'll, they, sometimes you can find the uh, PDF, but not usually. It says blah, 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 chip name, manufactured by NEC and distributed by Worldway Electronics. It's category being electronic component ICs. Great, that was so helpful. Okay, I did find this and yes, that is a 32K word by 8-bit static RAM chip and there's two of them. So it's probably using one for user memory and the other one for uh, its own operations. Um, yeah, so would that be 64K of RAM, but only 32K is available to the user? That would make sense. I, I can double check that they're both the same, but I'm pretty sure they are here. I'll just, uh, where's my phone flashlight? Phone flashlight, go! Oh no, they're not the same! Curses! Okay, the other chip is an LC3564SM-85. It's probably going to be another RAM chip, probably 8K. Yep. 64, well, so yeah, it ends with the 64, which is K bits, divided by 8 is K bytes. Yeah, hmm. You know, I might be using that as a screen memory, possibly. Yeah, so it's, or, well, more likely it's being used for work RAM just for the main processes. So yeah, I'm going to say it's got 32K of user program RAM and then 8K of operational RAM, which actually isn't a whole lot. Um, but it probably would memory map it pretty well. I can't find this chip, um, so sorry. <laughs> but 32 plus 8, 40, and then 64 minus 40 is 24. If I had to guess, this is probably a 16K or larger EEPROM that is actually holding the program, or, you know, holding the programs that make the calculator run. And... <clears throat> It doesn't have a window of any kind, so you can buy these where it's a one-time flash. You put it in a programmer, you flash it once, and then you can never flash it again. And that's pretty common, and it's more affordable because you don't have the window and whatnot, which raises the price. So it's actually looking like a pretty simple system. And God only knows what's under that glop top. Okay, that song was in Bioshock Infinite. That game, you know, I played through it. Actually, I played through it twice. I played through it the second time on easy mode just I don't know just to play through it twice and man that wasn't that was not even rem that was not even remotely as good as the first Bioshock like all the guns were just boring and generic also what was it I mean I I'm, I'm not I'm, I don't even understand what the philosophy was of the sky people it was really confusing because like were they religious or like super nationalists I mean Religious people wouldn't use all those drugs, for one thing. I just thought it was really confusing. Unlike, you know, Bioshock 1, where it was, you know, pretty obvious what it was. It was like, what if, you know, objectivism ran amok and was taken to the most extreme conclusion? Let's make a game about that. Maybe they'll make another one, like, on the moon. That'd be cool. Like, welcome to Moontopia. I mean, even the names in Bioshock, like uh, Andrew Ryan is a kind of an anagram for Ayn Rand. It, you know, it, you definitely knew what the theme of the game was, you know, the, 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 or the theme of the world was very obvious. You know, it left, you know, left nothing to the imagination. So you could explore that world better because it's like, OK, this is the theme of the world. Let's see what happens. Whereas, yeah, Bioshock Infinite, the theme of the world was kind of confusing. And I think that hurt the gameplay or hurt the story. The gameplay was hurt by the fact that the weapons were boring. All right, so let's see, this is gonna be your main negative. So four cells times four, six volts. So I'm gonna set my my bench power supply to six volts, 5.8, close enough. Let's see if we can make it run with the direct. Oh, hey, there we go. Nice. The direct connection made it work, even with the cracks. <laughs> I cracked it. All right. Um, hmm. I wonder, yeah, what is the point of this thing? This backup thing? The point of it, Ben, is not to ruin it. Silence, you. You could just read the manual, Ben. Never! That's probably going to be in my tombstone. Rip Ben. He didn't RTFM. 
great. You reset all memories. I'm, I'm so proud of you. The screen is kind of squashed if you look at it. Well, what, what was the problem? Was it the... I cleaned the corrosion off the battery terminals here. Let's... Oh no, it lost power. It's kind of weird how, what, how the screen looks. I don't know if you could see that from here, but it kind of looks milky, but then when you power it up, it becomes more clear looking. That's kind of cool. You know, the, the crystals aren't going to twist uh, in an analog fashion to make shades, I'm sure. It's probably just, you know, you can have these four colors, which is still pretty cool. So we've got this character, Elizabeth, for Bioshock Infinite. What's her deal? I know, she's, she's Belle from Beauty and the Beast, but with psychokinesis powers. Wow, brilliant. Come on, get back together. Oh, I gotta squish that ribbon cable. Squish that cat. Just squish that cat. I'm not sure if it shows up on camera, but there's definitely, well, it looks like rust, but it's um, battery corrosion on this terminal. Um, I think what I'll do is probably just use sandpaper to grind it away. This one looks good. I mean, usually, it's usually just one of the batteries that bursts. But well, I've seen worse. I still have to clean up my, <laughs> found a Super 8 camera at St. Vinnie de Paul. And um, yeah, it still had batteries in it. So when was the last time they would have used a Super 8 camera, right? Like. I don't know, maybe like 1983. <laughs> so those batteries have been there a while. Kind of looks like the inside of the Titanic in the battery compartment, so. Max and I were talking about trying to make like a short film on Super 8. You can still get the film developed. It's kind of expensive though. I mean, you'd probably be looking at about $80 for every two and a half minutes. What I could also do is use my bolt cutters, cut off, the last point of contact and then stretch it so there's like new points of contact. Metal shavings everywhere in the calculator! Got some corrosion on that terminal too, which is opposite of the terminal that we just ground, so yeah, that was the battery that failed. No questions there. Ooh, that's some crusty critter. Yeah. Yeah, I saw 8 bit guy's um, shed that he's building. That's pretty cool. I guess it's just for a northerner, it's just hard to imagine not having a basement. You know, you basically get twice the house. Although, <clears throat> um, basements don't. Oh, I'm sure most of you know this. Basements don't actually count as space unless they have uh, proper fire emergency egress, which is a fancy word for exit. Um, so, um, like if you have, uh, you know, like, so if you have, you can't have a, you can't, well, legally, well, no, it's not that you can't do it, it's like you can't list it. So if you rig up a, ba a bedroom in your basement, I believe you can still throw your kids in there, but then you can't say in the listing, oh, I have this extra bedroom because unless you have like one of those, um, you've probably seen them like it kind of looks like a basement window, but it's like dug into the ground and it's almost like, you know, there's like a opening outside the window. Basically, it's a, a basement window that a person can crawl out of. Right. I thought about redoing my basement, but I don't know. It's not like I'm going to throw a bunch of rec room parties. If I hang out with my friends, I usually do it like on the back porch or the garage. Let's see if this is moving. Okay, whatever that is, it's moving. So I suppose, eh, I don't really need the backup battery. It's not like I'm gonna use this for tests or anything. <laughs> eh, it's a little loose. Let's, um, not even gonna bother calling this a repair video because this is just, it's just sandpaper. Why on earth did they put this screw here? for moving the battery pack. I mean, were they that worried about it coming apart? I mean, how often does that really happen? Hmm, screen's a bit scratched up. Time to get the Novus. Let's give this screen the Novus treatment. First, we'll clean with Novus number one. Great. Then we'll remove large scratches with Novus number three. I don't have it. Let's just go to Novus number two. It's not like these scratches are catastrophic. I said that because the cat's trying to crawl up my leg. Oh, poor kitty. Purr engine, can you hear the purrs? I 
have to finish making this video. The YouTube algorithm will give me at least like three cans of cat food worth of money for this. Oh, now he's trying to grab the end of the rag. Oh wait, first rule of movie making, show don't tell. Look cat, if you put claw marks into this, into the screen, that would make me sad. Even though I cracked it, cracked the case. I cracked the case. I don't know if you can see the difference, but that got rid of most of the scratches. Nice. Buy Novus wherever fine plastic products are sold. And cats. So if you feel like loving me when you've got the notion, I second that emotion. Alice and I used to joke about uh, how Mariah Carey should have made a music video about dating a photographer. And the song would have been, you've got me feeling emotion higher than I ever before. Because, you know, that's emulsions in film. Get it? Look, there's a lot of time between shots on the Ben Heck show where we just talked about nonsense. Like Max and I came up with an entire plot for um, an alternate version of Lord of the Rings, uh, a Disney movie, and what was the other one? Oh, uh, Roadhouse Generation starring Charlize Theron as Dalton's daughter. They say she's Dalton's daughter. I ain't seen that. I thought you'd be a man. That's that's the line they're gonna say over and over in Roadhouse Generations. Instead of I thought you'd be bigger, it's I thought you'd be a man. And then you give her the name Jesse Dalton, so she has a slightly masculine name. So the people at the bar think, oh, the new bouncer is gonna be a man, but then it's a woman. That's the twist. But unlike the early casting, when they actually actually did want to, they, Hollywood wanted to make a remake of uh, uh, Roadhouse, starring, uh, not sure how it's pronounced, Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey, that, that fighter woman. But, you know, she's not an actress. You know, I gotta say, Charlize Theron has done the impossible. She's a female actress over 40 who has avoided being cast as a mom or a witch. You know, like she's still making movies where she's not a mom or a witch. Because normally, once you hit the big 4-0, unless you're Meryl Streep, <laughs> you'll be cast as a mom or a witch. Oh, that's right. Speaking of Meryl Streep, we drove through Madison County, Iowa, the other day. Oh, it's all nice and cleaned up. Let's see what this baby can do. This model is about 10 years newer than the one I, the 7,000 I could take apart. Yet you can, well, I don't know if you can see the colors. And by you, I mean the YouTube viewer. Oh yeah, you can kind of see it there, see? You've got red, blue, and green. The green's kind of hard to see. Yeah. Oh, okay, so this is all blue and that's black. And remember, I I am slightly colorblind. You remember the first time I got diagnosed with that and the, <laughs> that was a long time ago actually. The optometrist was like, what do you do for a living? And I'm like, oh, I'm a graphic artist. And she's like, oh. Um, uh, you know you're like 50% colorblind? And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Let's see if that will draw. Oh, cool. I wonder how you had color. That'd be cool. Uh, how do I go back to that? How do I even get to it in the first place? Um, is there an escape button? Trace, zoom, V window, sketch, G solve, GT. Oh, that must, okay, yeah, there we go. That's how you toggle it. All right, let's do, uh, well, wait, let's go. Let's make sure we're in the right mode. Setup. Ooh, we can change the plot line color. What? No, I want to change the plot line color. Plot line blue execute. <clears throat> I, do, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a, like a delay. Like when I move this cursor, it's supposed to be like a blue cursor, I want to say, but it kind of leaves a red shadow. The shadow knows. Oh, I had to hit these function keys. Okay, blue, orange, green. Okay, let's go orange, okay. Angle is radians. Okay, that's right, let's go. Where were we? Menu? 
How do we get out of this? Oh, I hit enter. Okay. So let's go sign of X. Okay. Draw. But I thought it was supposed to make uh, make it blue. I wonder if I can put commands for the... Okay, and go back to this. Oh, yeah, color. Okay, all right, so let's go up here. Color, blue. Come on. Orange, green. Oh, I see. Oh, I see how it's... Oh, oh, neat. Okay, so let make that blue. And then let's do cosine of X. Store color green yeah let's try that okay oh how do I get out of color uh, do I just push another button do I hit enter oh there's the colors neat yeah that is more of an orange than a red and then this is that's supposed to be green so where's black color Blue, or I guess those are the only colors we don't get to use black for this menu. Orange. Blue. Green. Actually, let's, okay. Let's change this one. Let's go log X. All right, then what are our colors? Color, blue. This must have been pretty cool <laughs> back in, uh, back in, uh, what was it, 1996? Because, I mean, there were, obviously there were color laptops in 1996. I'm not sure how well it shows up on camera, but yeah, the cursor is actually black. And blue and green look really similar. I mean, the red's quite distinct. Oh, I'm sorry, the orange. Maybe, just maybe, Ben, it's the giant exit key sitting there. What? Color, blue. Orange. Green. Exit. Ah, oh, there we go. Draw. He's Mad Dog Tannen. Okay, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it shows a better... Yeah, okay, yeah, you can see the difference. So you've got green, orange, blue, and then the target is... Well, not the target, but the Cartesian marker is also drawn in green. That's weird. Okay, let's uh, let's bounce out of that. Yeah, I have no time to learn how to program this thing. Well, I mean, I do, but I, I've got other things I need to do today besides program this thing. I did notice there is kind of a, a lag. Like, everything starts as black. Watch this when I hit something. See how it goes from black to blue? It's kind of weird. It's kind of That might be also because I'm sure it's, you know, it's a... You know, it's not an active matrix display, so it's got some lag. So it's lagging with the colors, just like a Game Boy screen might blur. See that? See how the colors shift? I would think that's visible on screen. Yeah, it's got a red shift. <laughs> Wait, red shift? Yeah, red shift means it's moving away from us, right? It's, you know, astronomical stuff. Well, cool. Well, anyway, um, it was not destroyed. Um, I did crack some of the case. That's my bad. Oh, there you go. We got the Casio CFX9850G color power graphic calculator to work. It just needed a little bit of cleaning and love. I can add it to my collection, and now the Casio people can stop giving me crap about having all TI. Well, I mean, they're, they're welcome to continue giving me crap. I mean, they can do whatever they want. Uh, gotta clean up the Goodwill sticker goo.